bizarre accident has led to the death of an experienced tree trimmer. As our Jackie Calloway reports, the victim was working with a wood chipper when something went horribly wrong. He goes up and he shoves his foot into the chipper. That amazes me. This is an unusual tragedy that claimed the life of a high school student. Hello, this is Mino. Welcome to my channel. I'm an arborist and a tree climber specialist. And what I like to do on my channel is share tree climber tips with beginners and experts. What we're gonna do today is react to chipper accidents and fatalities. Let's get to it. So here we go. The first clip that I have here is a, a chipper accident fatality that happened about 12 years ago. And well, let's get into it. A bizarre accident has led to the death of an experienced tree trimmer. As our Jackie Calloway reports, the victim was working with a wood chipper when something went horribly wrong. It was too late. I mean, when I heard the rope go through. The sound of something more than just wood grinding in his chipper sent Dwayne Wilson scrambling for the emergency. So the owner of the company hears metal going through the chipper, red flag. You, you shouldn't be hearing any kind of metal. So he goes to inspect it. And here, here is what he finds. He goes back there and... Uh, button. I had a guy that was working back with him on the back of the chipper. I heard a piece of metal that sounded like it went through my chipper. I ran that back That must have been a scary thing to down. hear, metal. And when I did, I looked over and I seen him He gets there, he the sees the, the guy on the ground. He worked for Dwayne Wilson for the last seven years and around this massive chipper for the last four. When they put the material through the machine, the rope got tangled around his neck. Wilson says his friend and employee got entangled in a rope that was caught in those branches. Miguel, according to fellow crew members, struggled against the rope, trying to escape the chipper, but was decapitated within seconds. That's a horrible situation. This, this man's been in the trade. He's experienced, um, been around a chipper for at least seven years. And, and this kind of situation happens. Uh, the rope wraps around his neck and decapitates him. The horrible, horrible situation. Um, and chipper accidents, they happen all the time. It, it's amazing because a lot of the chippers of nowadays, they have safety features that shouldn't allow this kind of thing to happen. So the point is this, that if there's all these safety things, then how can things like this happen? Next, I want to show you an, another thing. So in the past, there's another chippers. They're called um, drum chippers. Well, at a drum chipper, if you were working at a drum chipper, you're on high alert. You know that's that's where the drum spins so fast, and the material you throw in, the material you that you throw in, it goes in quickly. Here's a, a quick clip on on what that is. A lot of times they call them a chuck and duck. So you can see once it goes in. Boom, the material goes in super fast. So what ends up happening is with this type of chipper, you're gonna cut smaller pieces and then you stand back and then you throw it in and it goes inside. You really have to respect that. You know that in a chipper like this, that an accident can happen in any second. So yeah, there's things that you'll do. You'll prepare, you'll get a smaller branch, you throw it in and it goes. Now the next thing I want to show you is in, in cutting, so there's this guy and, and he's working with another guy and so with a, a drum chipper, if there's anything that can hook you, it can either pull you into it. So here's a scene where this guy's working and, and his buddy helps him out. So he's getting prepared, he has one small branch which is good, but you look, when he's getting ready to throw, there's a hook behind him right? That kind of situation right there could be really bad. If you throw it into a, a, a drum chipper and that hooks you, it could pull the guy in. So having um, the knowledge not to do that. So though, you know, that's, a, that's an old chipper. And, and the reason I wanted to bring the old chippers up is because in those situations, you were always ready to, to move and get out of the way. Accidents still happened with the drum chipper in the past. I mean that that was something that you know There's always going to be accidents, but you can prepare and and um, You know do your best not to be in that kind of situation So now we got these these newer chippers and in these newer chippers. They are um, They have all of these safety options, you know, they have um, The drum is still there, 
but it's it's hidden by these two or one or two big feed wheels that'll pull the material in. And what happens is, is it pulls the material in slowly. So it, it kind of it kind of gives you a false sense of security that um, you're safe. But behind those feed wheels, there's still that drum that, that really is going at a high rate of speed. It's just an illusion that it's a real slow piece of equipment. So I got another clip here that, that is, it's showing this clip here where, where these people are working. And I, I, I got to show you this. This is like, so now this is a, a, a drum chipper with a big feed wheel. And what you have here is a bunch of people. They are working around. The guy is standing directly behind the chipper, which is really bad. And you have a group of people. And if you look at this group of people, they're not having any kind of safety gear, no PPE. They're, they're not even in boots. And they're all gathered around this chipper. And they're feeding this material in. So that's, that's a way that you can really get injured. Um, there is a bar. If you look at this chipper, there's a bar that if you push that bar, it would stop the feed wheel. Okay. This would be a bad situation. And that would be a situation where you're more likely going to get hurt. So what I wanted to show you next is this other clip where, you know, you could see those people where they're all gathered around and they're feeding into it. There's nobody even concerned that they're going to get hurt. But in the way that they're doing this, definitely there's a good chance somebody would get hurt. So this next clip here, um, I thought this was really interesting. Once I saw that clip and then this clip, these two guys look like they're in, um, doing storm damage. But the way their system is set up, um, they're really doing pretty, pretty well. Let's check this out. So looks like storm damage. You got this first guy. He's on the left and he's managing either the button because there's a button on a chipper that can either um, seize the wheels from running and um, if, if you have a, a problem he could stop it and then there's that feed bar that goes over the chipper where if if he got stuck he would um, he could release it and make it go backwards and now you see them that they're all geared up they have hard hats they got rain gear and they switched off so the one guy he was probably getting tired and, and now when you get like switched off and now the other guy is on, on point. So if something happened, the next guy who's over there feeding the chipper, he is safe. Um, I want you to notice that in this clip here, there's a couple of, of little strings or wires that are inside the hopper. That's another um, safety um, feature of a chipper. When if you were inside, if you started getting pulled, that would be something where you can grab it would slow or um, stop the feed wheels. So anyways, these two guys here, the way they were working, um, it's a better situation than that other clip. So even though there's new chippers out there and have all these safety features on them, um, when a rope, when a rope gets in the chipper, that's that's when everything just changes because you know you you see those feed wheels they move slow that you put branches in it and the branches are moving slowly well inside those two feed wheels you see the drum now here's a clip on a simulation of what happens when the rope gets stuck in the drum so here we go if you notice those branches are going in slowly there's a rope connected to that dummy and boom when the rope came in contact with the drum, that dummy flew inside that chipper very quick. Now, if if you were a um, if you're on the ground, right, and and you didn't notice that, once that rope comes in contact, those feed wheels are pulling those branches slowly. But if there's branches that are entangled, um, or there's ropes that are entangled in those branches once it hits that drum it's full positive now if that was somebody's arm so let's say you're doing a rigging job if you were doing a rigging job and you have the rope on top and then there's a guy holding the rope anyways you think he's done and then if that rope somehow got tied into the branch and the branch goes and the guy's holding the rope he could get yanked 
worse than that if the rope is on the ground and um, there's a climber in the tree and once the um, rope, if the rope gets tangled inside of the branches, if it's a climber's line, he's up in the tree, his rope usually is on the ground. If your chipper is close in close proximity to the, the, the area where you're working and the branches get pulled in, that climber could be at risk of dying. Like, once that rope goes in, the climber can get shoot up to the top of the tree. And once it hits, it could either break out the tree, it could snap the climber's rope, he could fall to the ground. Um, that's really something to be aware of. And, and the people who work around the area, like the ground men or even the climbers, um, you got to train people to be aware of the ropes. With um, even the drum chippers, they are safe looking. They, there's a lot of good safety features. But if people aren't paying attention to the ropes that are in the area, that could be, um, I mean, a lot of things can happen. If it's not a fatality, you could amputate a leg. You, you know, in the way that that dummy flew and he hit, depending on how you hit that chipper, you know, it could be a real bad situation. That's something that you really want to um, train people on. So, you know, that first clip was 12 years ago. And then this other one, tonight a freak accident that turned deadly in the lehigh valley Police i came across this and i just with a wood chipper at a residence when he was suddenly caught a 17 year old and this was like 2022 to the hospital where he died a short time later it is wednesday night and the big story in action news is an unusual tragedy that claimed the life of a high school student so Excel he's a new Road person in in, in the trade Hall, you know 17 years story. old katie Shari and Rick, residents that we've been speaking with around here say the loss of that 17 year old boy has really hurt this community. They are small and tightly knit. You can still see the wood here behind me. A neighbor we spoke with says she saw crews working here yesterday before that accident happened. It's a nerve that happens right in a neighborhood like that. Authorities say 17 year old Isaiah Bedox died after he was partially pulled into a commercial wood chipper around 1.30 yesterday afternoon. State troopers tell Action News part of his clothing got caught on the machinery. I don't want to think about it. Just because what a so in that news clip, they say that his clothing got caught in the chipper. So I'm guessing it's not it's not one of those drum chippers. It's a feed wheel chipper. Um, where there's so many safety features that this kind of thing shouldn't happen. Well, having loose clothing and if you're feeding uh, chipper branches in, if you reverse the branches, sometimes you got hooks, that could pull you in. If you stand behind the chipper um, and you're into that chute, once you get hooked, it would slowly pull you in. Um, that's a sad situation. There's other things too. So if you're working around a chipper, there's a um, gauntlet style gloves. Now a gauntlet style glove is a glove that has a wide opening. And it's my understanding nowadays, um, it, it, here in America, that those are actually um, not proper to use. If you're using gloves or leather gloves in chipping, you should have a, a knit wrist, something where a branch can't get um, hooked and pull you in, or even having like a Velcro strap glove. Um, gloves like that will be um, better for you to use rather than like a gauntlet style. And then even the clothing that you're wearing, if you have big baggy clothes and um, you're chipping, yeah, they can get hooked. Also, you don't want to feed the branches that you're putting in in reverse. You'd always want to put the butt end of the branches in because if you reverse the branches, you will have these hooks. And if a hook grabs you, and you get knocked off balance, that branch could slowly pull you into the chipper. Uh, you, you just, it, it's really a difficult situation when you hear somebody that was like 17 at the beginning of a trade because of something is like a, a clothing it pulls them into the, the chipper. So this uh, other clip here where these guys are working. And it, this is like where I would say that if you're training people, this well, this guy is doing some things that are just crazy wrong. So I'll, sh I'll show you here. So you see this guy, his head's inside the chute. He's at the rear of the chipper. What can happen with that is 
he could just get pulled in. You know, if you're you're training people, you know, that kind of thing just shouldn't be happening. You know, having somebody who's put their head full on in a hopper, feeding branches, there's no way. They have that safety bar where you can like stop it or reverse it. And if you're feeding from the back and you put your whole head in the hopper, that is just asking for an injury. So further, I was watching that same clip and there was something more that I wanted to show you here. He goes up and he shoves his foot into the chipper. That amazes me. Why would anybody put their foot in and like stop with their foot a branch into the chipper? Um, over here in California, I don't know, it was a few years back and I think it was in Inglewood where a guy was running a chipper. He got up into the hopper and, and the chipper has a like nowadays they have this big gate that goes back. So this guy stands up in the chipper and he's like kicking the, the brush to go in the chipper. Well, he, 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 it was a fatality. It was a fatal accident. Something that you wouldn't, you just, why would you even do that? Um, it's important to understand before you use equipment to do it in the proper way. Um, you know, these feed wheels are just strong. They could pull hundreds of pounds into a chipper. What would, why would somebody think that using their foot to push material in a chipper would be even necessary? You know, with that guy, he paid with his life, you know, and I, I, and I think that it's not just that guy. It's the people who work around him, you know, that those people had to see this guy, or I don't know if it was this whole body of portions of him just gone. And, and it was over something that should have never happened. So, now, aside from just having the, you know, that you, you can get in and get pulled in, there's other situations where when you feed into it, I saw this real, this clip and it's interesting where these guys are, you'll see they're feeding palm fronds and bam. So in that clip, you could see they had a close up of the palm frond. Those are um, Canary Island palms and they have these wicked spikes on the butts of them. So something that not really the best thing to do is to feed the green part in first because now the spikes are at the end. But it wasn't so bad. If you put the green in first and the spikes are going straight in, it's not so bad. But when the guy set it up, so the other guy who was off to the side of the chipper, he's in a good spot, actually, if you think about it. He's off to the side, he's away from the hopper, he should have been safe. But the way that that um, palm frond was fed into it, it actually whipped past the point and it looked like it spiked him on his hip, on his side. Now those those palm spikes, they're very painful. Um, once you get spiked with that, some people have reactions, they swell up. That, that's a tough situation when that kind of thing happens. Like, you know, and, and like I said, he was in a good spot. So what I tell people is if I'm ever working and or, or training anybody in, in chipper use, I tell them that, you know, we show them all the, the safety spots and on the chippers nowadays, like I said, they have that bar that can, if you pull it toward you, it feeds um, branches in. If you put it in the center, it stops. And if you push um, away, it will reverse the feed, right? So, um, and then on the side, they have a button that will, you know, if it just stops, you have to go to the side and hit a button. And now it'll start to, to, to re restart the wheels and then it'll be full motion. So what I usually say is when you're going to feed, you, you put your branch in and you go out to the side on either side if you're going and you get out of that area where the hopper is. And I had a guy who was working for me, a, you know, some years back and he put a branch inside the chipper and then he came walking straight back. So what happens is if you put like large branches, sometimes when those feed wheels pulls it in, the branches can twist on you. So the guy did, you know, he put it in, fine, it was going in, and then he walked straight back. And as he was walking back, the branch twisted and it swung and it took out his knee. Threw him on the ground, the guy fell, you know, he was injured, he was out for a couple of weeks. And if he would have never, you know, if he never had taken that route, if he never came back, 
if he would have circled out and just, you know, stayed in the front of the chipper, that kind of thing never would have happened. So, um, yeah, w what I wanted to say and I know show people is that chippers are a very important tool for tree care and, and they got to be respected. And I think training will help alleviate a lot of this. And, and if you look at, you know, some of these accidents that are happening where they're fatalities, um, whether it's a fatality or just injured, yanked, all of that can be preventable. As long as people are trained and they understand the equipment, this kind of thing could really stop happening. It's sad when people are in the trade and they get injured and worse if there's a fatality over over chipping, you know? This is kind of what I had to say, my two cents on it. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. All right, there you go. My hope for this video is that a gob of people watch it and understand that these chippers in this trade are necessary and my hope is that people won't be injured as much and will definitely have a lot less fatalities and maybe no fatalities at all. I'm hoping that this helps people to get an open eye when it comes to training their people, not just the people who are working around the chipper itself but to the other people who are affected, like the climbers or the guy who's standing far away and a rope gets stuck in the chipper and it pulls them in. You know, having the idea and the knowledge that things like that happen and it happens even till today. Chipper fatalities, is, it's pretty common still and it would be great if that would be something of the past. I, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, I would ask you guys to comment, like, and subscribe. Hit that notification bell if you like what we do. And by all means, share our videos. And stay safe, please. Take care.